just got an important tell from Red Hat, RHT, the world's largest provider of open source software. Red Hat is a high multiple tech stock that trades at 30 times next year's earnings estimates. This has got earnings, though, the kind of stock that got slammed in March and April as investors fled the high flyers. Plus, it's often lumped in with cloud computing names because both Salesforce.com and Amazon use Red Hat to power their cloud infrastructure. That's a relatively small piece of the business. Red Hat's not a software as a service company. It's the number one purveyor of open source Linux operating systems for the enterprise, basically the lower cost alternative to Microsoft. Red Hat gives away its software for free, then sets up customers uh, as subscribers who pay regular fees for maintenance and customer service. It's not just operating systems. The company also does the same thing with middleware, virtualization software, and storage server software. So what's the important tell? Last night, Red Hat reported a stellar quarter, a one-cent earnings beat on higher-than-expected revenues that rose 17% year-over-year. But you know what? The key metric here is billings. And Red Hat billings increased by 16.6, much better than the 13.7% gain the analysts were looking for, thanks to a growing number of large deals. Deferred revenue increased by 20% year-over-year, another key metric, and management raised its guidance for the full fiscal year. Stock initially spiked more than 4 bucks or 8%. We're pulling back to close up 2 or 3.8%. That's where the opportunity is. However, the fact that Red Hat reported good numbers and was able to rally could be a positive sign for the whole core of high-flying tech stocks. Now, this stock has given us an 18% gain since we last spoke to the CEO roughly nine months ago, despite all that volatility over the same period. Can it keep climbing? Let's take a closer look with Jim Whitehurst, the president and CEO of Red Hat. Learn more about the quarter and his company's prospects. Mr. Whitehurst, welcome back to Mad Money. Hi, Jim. It's great to be back. All right, Jim, a lot of companies are telling us that it's a tepid environment for IT spending, that things are more competitive. You had your best quarter in five years. What are you doing right the other guys are doing wrong? Well, I think we're in a secular change from a traditional uh, client server architecture to cloud. And in this new cloud architecture, uh, people who are providing that infrastructure, be it an Amazon or a Google or a Red Hat, are performing actually very well. Well, you did something that I thought was quite surprising. We've had SAP on a number of times, a gigantic company. You are now partnering with them. I always felt that they were the antithesis of what Red Hat's about. Well, but uh, companies like Red, uh, like uh, SAP as well uh, want their software to run on modern platforms. And Red Hat, with Red Hat Enterprise Linux and our other suite of products, is kind of the modern platform that new applications are, are being written to. So we have great partnerships with SAP and most of the major ISVs as they're looking to make sure their applications are running on the newest, best, most modern uh, new platforms. You called out telecom spending as a, uh, look, there were so many things you could have called out, but telecom spending with you seemed to really get very, very hot and heavy. How'd that happen? Well, what we're seeing is the telecom operators are seeing an explosion of demand, primarily because of mobile data. And so their need for technology is expanding greatly. We've always had a really good franchise in telecom because they're very technically sophisticated. They've always appreciated our products. And as the demand in that sector is growing, they need IT to, to, uh, um, to be able to meet that demand. And so we're well positioned to meet that. You know, I find, Jim, even, when we, even after all these years we talk about the cloud, the only thing that people really seem to understand when they hear cloud is, well, that's Amazon. You've been a partner with Amazon for years. When I see something new from Amazon, do I think that Red Hat's involved? Well, in many things that they do, uh, we're involved. We have a multi-dimensional relationship. Certainly all of their back-end e-commerce uh, runs on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So they're a big reference customer for us. Um, we also have a great go-to-market relationship. So one of our, our big drivers of growth that we talked about is people running their Red Hat environments on Amazon. So we certify hardware in somebody's traditional data center, and we certify on Amazon. So we can go to customers and say, you buy subscriptions to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. We don't care if you're running on Amazon or run it in your own data center. It's a real source of value for our customers. It's also a real source of value for Amazon because it allows them to go after customers and say, hey, you can take your exact same environment running on Red Hat and run it just as confidently and get support from Red Hat on that infrastructure. Well, then uh, finally, we have a whole set of, of uh, middleware products uh, uh, in a product bundle called OpenShift that actually runs on Amazon. So we sell that to customers, and then the back end of that actually runs on Amazon. So we're a big customer of Amazon's as well. Well, all the things you've always talked about came together this quarter, Jim. You said you made some acquisitions, and we would see the progress. Boom, it happened this quarter. You said you'd be able to cross-sell those acquisitions across all of your customers. You did that, too. I think this is quarter one of the next leg of Red Hat, breaking out of this range of the 50s. Thank you so much, Jim Whitehurst, the CEO and president of Red Hat. Good to see you, sir.
Thanks. Great to see you, Jim. Thank you. Stocks languished. It's been wrong that it languishes. This company has the beginning of a multi-year earnings path. I would stay with Red Hat, stay with Kramer.